Chase and welcome back. Today I'm gonna do a quick video on the camper build out. Just go a little bit more in depth. So since I posted the video showing my camper build this last summer, about six months ago, I've been very surprised by the number of people that have commented, reached out through email and through Instagram and asked for more details on it and specifically for the design and the plans and when I first started getting asked, my initial reaction was, no, I'm not gonna do that just because I don't know how to, and I don't really have the experience to offer a whole lot, but people just kept reaching out, and so I, I ended up deciding that it'd be worth putting the time in to kind of learn that process and get to a point where I can at least share what I've done and go a little bit more in depth in a way that can hopefully help you guys uh, in your process of building out your car or your Subaru. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. And I also have an announcement that I'm pretty excited about. So with this, this whole process, since I've been working on trying to build the plans um, and actually rebuild the whole setup, I've been thinking about the best way that I could share that with you guys, just because through these videos, um, I feel like I can only show so much. And once it's posted, I can't update it. I can't change things if I change tools or design whatever. And so I ended up building a new website and I got a hold of my, I'm good buddy Jared who's a very talented writer and well he has a lot of skills that I don't and so I asked him if he'd help me out and so we we joined together and here in the last few weeks we've um, built up a new website it's called roadtorid.com um, I'll put a link down below but this is just kind of kind of be the hub for all things um, car camping and mountain travel so we are going to put the plans up there the details on the build um, you know different just all sorts of different stuff. So if you're interested in this video or my other ones, you'll probably want to check that out. And we will be continuing to update that. And then additionally, I also started a Facebook group that I'll link below as well. And that's just going to be a place for conversations to happen surrounding these builds and just the, the questions, comments, and hopefully we can get together. Maybe some even more experienced people than I um, will show up and, and have some good insight to offer. So uh, if you're looking to build, jump over there. But anyways, here we go. This might get a little bit long, so I apologize in advance, but I'm going to go as in-depth as I can right now and kind of cover everything from the new design, the reason I built it the way I did, the tools that I used, the material that I used, and really just as much as I can without, you know, going on for hours. So here we go. Okay, so uh, like I mentioned in my videos previously, I used to have my truck and I take that camping um, a lot. I'd sleep in the back or go backpack and whatever, and it was awesome. Um, but then here recently in the last couple of years, I ended up selling that and switching over to this rig. And that was just to basically gain better gas mileage so I could travel um, a little further and just yeah, have a little better mobility and then also have uh, the option of using the um, car's heat as a heat source when I'm camping, when it's you know cold out. And so there's a variety of other reasons, but those were the biggest ones and I've been pretty happy with it so far. So my rig is a 2016 Subaru Outback Limited and it's pretty much stock. I have some all season tires on it right now. I'd like to upgrade those. And then I've got my roof rack set up up top and I'll probably do Maybe another video on that another time, but it's the, the factory roof rails up here. And I've got this basket, the cargo to carrier over here. That's where I put all my gear, skis, stuff like that. And then mounted on the side of the basket right here, I have my awning. And yeah, so that's that. As far as the inside goes, when I stop to set up camp wherever I am, I'll slide the seats forward so that they're just ahead of this post um, on both sides. And then, yeah, I've got the camper back here. And when I built this, really the um, biggest goals for me were one, to keep it modular so that it could come apart into different pieces that could be easily removed in case I need to switch it back to the seats to haul people or um, if I wanna sell it and I don't wanna include this with it down the road. Um, I just wanted it to be able to come in and out easily so that I wasn't just pinned down because I did remove the seats in order to do this build and, and get more space. So. It's modular, comes out quick. I can switch it back and forth between this setup and the seats in, a, in about 10 minutes, so it's not too bad. But anyways, yeah, let's dive into the build itself. So looking over here, the first thing you see, the step here, this is just pretty much what I use to get in and out and then leave my boots at night so that the dirt is kind of contained down here, doesn't get up on top where I'm sleeping. And then also I'll throw my soft cooler bag here when I'm driving 
And then if I do need to work while I'm on the road, I have this table that I showed my last video, made one on how to build this, but it basically hangs off the back of my seat. And then I can sit right there on that step with my, my legs in there. And it works really well to uh, just work while I'm out on the road. And now this, uh, this seat in front of it, I, I left a little bit of space on this design in order to keep a backpack or um, a camera gear box. And then it's angled off to where with the seat back, I can still um, slip it in and out there. So now we'll bounce around to the side or to the back for the, uh, the camp kitchen, I guess I'll call it. So we got my kitchen cabinet here. Uh, on the back, I've got a pullout drawer. It's not on slides. And that's because the slides take, I believe it's about a half an inch on either side. And so I'd be losing an inch, which is fairly significant when you're dealing with this tight of a, an area. And it's removable, um, so I can take it inside when I need to, you know, yeah, add stuff to it. Or if I need to clean things, it's just nice to be able to grab the whole box, take it inside. Or if I'm at a uh, campground or somewhere where I want to go set up, I can bring this over to a picnic table or whatever. And I just keep my jet boil, pans, cup, um, arrow press, coffee, all that stuff in there. And then I've got this water cube up here. It's really convenient. I basically just set it up to where it rolls back little spigot there and I have a second smaller one that I can stack behind if I want to bring two and then up here I've got um, a little gap on top for just extra storage my fan up there and then I have my lights so I actually ended up replacing the lights with these new LED ones um, I like them a lot better they're, they have motion sensors in them, so I can turn them on, and then when I'm moving around camp at night, they'll turn on and off as I come into view. And then I've got my spaces down here for all of my random stuff, um, primarily my battery and electrical equipment. So this is my um, battery bank that I use a ton, um, actually. It's plugged in right here and lined through the back of the, the cabinet. And that comes back here to this 12 volt outlet. And so it charges as I drive. And then I've got my USB 12 volt and 110 outlets that I can use to charge my cameras, um, tons of, you know, different options with that. And so that's been very useful. Then these other compartments, I usually just, you know, I'll put books or whatever extra storage I need. And then uh, I've got this flip up table. So this is also new with this design. And it's just a flip up table that latches. It's got these nice little um, latches that hold it nice and firm. And that just doubles as extra kitchen space. And also if I am inside, I can actually use this as kind of a workspace when the, my pad's in there and sleeping bag and all that stuff. So that's been a nice addition. And then I still have the same slide out kitchen tables here. And those have really been one of my favorite amenities to have on the road. It's like a tailgate for a car really. And it's just been awesome for cooking and working on but yeah so moving on then i got my box here this usually just carries all of my extra camera gear really any extra gear that i don't have room for up there or i just need better access to and this I, i'll take out at night and just set on the ground or else i'll throw it up in the basket on top that i showed you guys earlier so that's that and then bouncing around to this side We've got a couple things. So this is new for this design. I built a little box that adds onto the front and this is just basically a big snack box. And this part over here is perfectly sized for a LaCroix box. Um, so if you're into those, it works out really well. And then the last model had the front um, bed extension piece slipped on and that worked really well. Um, with this one, I switched it up just because having that piece that um, I had to store somewhere was a little bit annoying. And so I switched it over to where this one has a flip forward extension, bed extension. So when I get the seats forward, that flips perfectly flat. And I'll do that real quick to show you. So there it is, it's on a nice hinge. And then I've got this uh, compartment here that I use to store recovery gear, medical kit, um, extra blanket, a bunch of other stuff. And that's also the access for the attachment to the frame itself. And I'll show you that when I go to remove it. So 
there's that and then on the side here has the same little shoe compartment which is really convenient you can store you know an extra set of shoes or two and uh and then there's still a little bit of space in front of there in between the seat for um some extra storage so that's kind of a brief overview of the new design. Now I'm going to take all the stuff out and then I'll remove each component piece by piece and talk about it a little bit. All right, before we get started, one other thing that I forgot to mention was the weight of this thing. So I wanted to build it fairly lightweight so that I wouldn't just lose all the gas mileage that I was making use of with this vehicle. So the, the first build, which is actually on the ground behind me now, it was... 60 pounds heavier than the car was with the seats in so i pulled the seats out and they were i think it was about 48 pounds and then when i put the build in i weighed each piece and that's about where it landed so it was about the weight of a you know young kid so not a significant difference and this one i think is probably a tad bit heavier just because i used a little bit different material and i'll touch on that later but it's somewhere in that ballpark i would guess 60 to 75 pounds over the weight of the the vehicle just the seats in Okay, so to remove this this setup is simple. I designed it to where everything comes out with removing um, only four different bolts. So it's two in the camp or the uh, the cabinet, and then two on the platform. And all four of them are just a three eighths head bolt, and can be done with just a wrench. I prefer to use a a socket on my drill with this little 90 degree deal, but uh, it can be done with just this. So it's very simple. So let's get started on this cabinet. So the cabinet's out and I'll show you what those bolts were secured into um, when I get the platform out. But next I'll just pull the platform out and uh, basically it's just sliding the tables and then um, going up on the inside of that cabinet to get those two bolts that are driven in from the underside up there. All right, so I got the cabinet and the platform out and I figured this might be the best time to show um, the design and kind of how it nests together. So the cabinet obviously was just fastened down to the platform itself. And then the platform is fastened to um, the vehicle frame where the seats mounted previously before I pulled them out. And the way that I did that is, let me flip this up here. So, you can see on the underside, I did um, a series of strips of ripped um, plywood on the bottom that I used to 
um, put the, the slide-in tables in. And then up here towards the front, I drilled holes. And so there's four that match up with the four different spots on the, the frame anchor in there. I only use two just because I don't don't feel the need for the other ones. Um, and then on the the as far as how the bolts um, secure it in, there's these things called T nuts, and they look like this. There's a few different styles, but they just kind of sit flush into the wood, and they just act as a nut. So you don't have to actually connect a nut on the other side of the bolt. Um, you just slide the slide the bolt in, get it started, and then you can wrench it down with, with an impact wrench or drill or whatever. So that's what I use to secure it. Um, and again, it's just those, those four different bolts. And then up here, I've got the kind of the support system for the cat or the platform. And this is by far the most challenging part to build um, just because getting it to nest into this area where the seats were without um, putting any unnecessary pressure on any wiring or just not hard points uh, was, was challenging. And this one is, is working super well so far. I think I've got it pretty dialed in to where it's just resting on, you know, a couple of hard anchors and it's set up to where this this piece gets sandwiched between the frame um, anchors here and the platform itself so it's also secured to the frame but this is a two-piece um, unit the first one is this and this is kind of the uh, the bed extension support as well as the the storage spot and it's just anchored in using two 90 degree metal pieces here and l brackets i guess they're probably called and it just pops up i'm gonna have to set this down throw it on my hand so basically pops up like that so we've got these two two brackets and they each have a cut in slot that they sit in so they're nested in and then the top of the bracket sits flush with the top right there and so it's nice and secure so remove that first Okay, now I will pull this thing out. And uh, this guy is resting on the front and the back. So I'll just slip it forward so you can kind of see where it sits on the back end. So we've got these little um, seat mount brackets and that's where the back of the platform sits flush on. And then I've got this cut out and that's what nests up with these um, seat mounts and all the seat belts, everything stays in. So when I pull out the seats, I didn't remove anything else. And that way I can put the seats back in nice and easily. So I will pull that out now. All right, there we go. So the seat is out, um, or sorry, the, the whole build is out. And now just so you can get a better look at the what the car looks like without the seats in or anything else, you can see that it's a little bit of a complex arrangement to frame stuff into, but this, uh, this setup has worked nice. And the front rests on this carpet edge right here across. And it, so all of the pressure is right here and right here. All right, so we've got all the pieces out and you got to see how they nest together. So this is what they're looking like here on the ground um, when they're all separated. It's simple, um, they stack up nicely if I do need to store them in the garage, which my garage is a mess right now. I have like three different projects going on, but yeah, so the entire thing was built with three quarter inch plywood. I used birch plywood. That was just what I had for my local um, box store here. So I built the first one, this, this one back here with half inch plywood and that worked well. I didn't have any issues really, but I did notice that there's a little bit of flex when I would climb in and on like the, some of the areas that weren't supported directly by something below them. I just, I was a little bit nervous. And so I decided to try out three quarter inch on this one and it's proven to be a lot better. I think not only is it more stable when I'm like climbing in and out on stuff, uh, but it's also better at creating strong joints. I've found just because it has that extra little bit of width when I'm you know joining things together they just seem a lot more rock solid so for materials 
pretty much all I used was this whole thing was built with right at about two four by eight foot sheets of three quarter inch birch plywood. And then I've got all the hardware. So the hinges for the flip up table on the cabinet and then the one long hinge for the bed extension and the T-nuts there. And then the four three eighths inch bolts with washers on them. And that is, I believe about it for the hardware to build or put everything together. I used a um, joining system that's made by Craig and I'll show you that tool in a bit, but it's just pocket joinery. And so each one of these little holes that you see here are just angled pockets with screws in them. And that's how I um, joined everything together. I used wood glue on some of the components. I didn't use them on all, but um, adding in wood glue just makes everything stronger. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I used for the build itself. And then if you have the desire to make it waterproof or um, just more resilient in general, you can cover it in polyurethane. So I do that on a lot of my projects and that is this stuff right here. You can get spray on version or wipe on and there's plenty of videos out there on this, but good way to protect it and then if you have the desire to put carpet on it so my first design i i actually carpeted the whole thing you can kind of see it here and that was really nice um comfortable soft uh but i wanted to try just doing bare wood for this one to see how it worked i'm not entirely sure which one i prefer yet but um if you want carpet it's pretty easy i just bought some bulk carpet from home depot and it was the same as this stuff right here. It's nice and thin carpet. And then I used this 3M adhesive and I sprayed down the wood, the back of the carpet, sandwiched it together. Um, and then once I got it all laid on, cut out, I also added staples around the edge um, just to make sure that the edge, edges don't peel up. But that's it for the carpet. All right, so that was most of the materials that I used. And again, if I forget anything, I'm gonna add it into the into the website. So if you're wanting a full list, I'd probably go check that out. But uh, moving on to the tools that I use. So a little bit of background on me. I don't have really any carpentry background. Um, I did work in construction for a little bit, but it wasn't in this this uh, capacity. And I also don't have very many tools and I just got this this garage. So. I did this with a fairly minimal setup and I hope that I guess when people see this that it maybe opens the door to to you guys to realize that uh, it's not that hard. Um, YouTube is awesome. There's so many resources out there to, to teach you um, different components. But anyways, the tools that I did use um, are pretty much all right here. And again, if I forget anything, I'll add it into the article. But uh, I used a drill and impact wrench. You really only need one. Probably just a drill would be fine and then you know drill bits and a screw driving bit and then i've got a sander you don't need one of these i use this this palm sander it's really convenient but you can always just hand sand and then i used a jigsaw and this was used to cut most of the angled components um so the holes in the cubby and the yeah really all of the the pieces that i had to remove we're done with this guy and that could probably be done with a sawzall or maybe even a handsaw if you don't have one of these and then moving on um, i think the biggest challenge that i originally uh, was concerned about was not having a table saw and i was fairly happy with um, what i did to get around that so i used a skill saw for the majority of the straight line um, cutting and for ripping the plywood into strips for the the underside and building the tables and the way that i did that was well i guess there was two methods one was i would just measure draw a line and then cut and use a straight edge to kind of guide my saw and the other one which i was a lot more excited about it worked extremely well was using this craig uh, saw guide so this thing you just uh, attach the skill saw into and then it has measurements on top you can set your cut width and then where my hand is here it guides along the edge of your board and you can use it to rip um, strips of up to 24 inch width and that worked really well so I use this a ton on this build especially well I mean yeah really for the whole thing so this is an awesome tool and it's not that expensive either so 
much cheaper option than buying a table saw for the time being at least and then i used a framer square use that quite a bit you could also use a um you know bigger square really any any right angle device that you have and then a tape measure and my wrench for the the bolts themselves and then for all the joinery so like i mentioned earlier everything i did was using this pocket hole jig so this is a craig jig that is essentially just a clamp with these pocket guides that you use their um, drill bit to go into create these pockets that you can then drive your screws through and it just makes very bomber joints that i've been really excited with um, and you use that rather than uh, just you know screwing through the back side of a board and so it's much much more aesthetically pleasing and that you can hide the um, the pocket holes inside of all the components or on the underside and they just sit nice and flush with everything and yeah so then the last tool i didn't mention is uh clamps use these quite a bit especially for the cabinet clamping things together to kind of hold them tight while i screw them together so that's that two a couple other things that i didn't mention i did in my uh, previous video uh, are the the window covers so when i am sleeping in the car at night I've got these little bug nets and they just slip right over the door so that I can leave the window down as far as I need to and they'll keep any bugs from going in and out. I also have these Reflectix window covers so I have a cutout for each window and it's just this aluminum covered bubble wrap and that helps to, to uh, insulate the inside a little bit and then also block out all the light. And then these are one other thing that I forgot to mention, these are rain guards and they just were for keeping the rain you know out of the window and so at night i can leave it cracked down to there at a minimum and even if it rains or snows it'll just you know go over the top and i'll still have airflow going in all right guys that is pretty much it thanks again for um all the questions and the the comments and everything that you guys have reached out and said it's it's been awesome um it's definitely motivated me to really well, build the second version, build the website, all that stuff. So I really hope it help you, helps you guys a lot. And again, um, please check out the website. Uh, we're super excited to share that with you guys. And yeah, that's it. So take care.